Hi, I'm Leonie West from Westerly Design and I'm just going to talk to you about tension when doing ruler work. There are two types of machines, one which uses a top loading bobbin and one which uses a front loading bobbin. Both of these bobbin cases are adjustable and we can adjust the tension on our bobbin to make our stitches perfect. Tension is not something to be frightened of. It's very easy to adjust your tensions and if you're worried about adjusting tensions and getting back to where your machine is set to, then it's a good idea to have two bobbin cases, one for doing your ruler work and free motion quilting and one that you use for your standard sewing. But it is a really good thing to learn how to adjust the tension. When we're sewing, our bobbin tension is the one that is the most important to start with. So if I change my threads, I will then need to change the bobbin tension. Once I've got the bobbin tension correct, then I will adjust the top tension to work correctly with the bobbin tension. But unless the bobbin tension is correct in the first place, I can keep adjusting the top tension and not get it right because the bobbin tension is wrong. I'm going to show you the front loading bobbin first. This is a front loading bobbin and we want our thread to move freely through that bobbin. This is quite tight. I've tightened this up to show you how tight it is. I'm going to lift the thread up. I want the bobbin to stand up but stay in my hand with the thread running. So if you look at this one, it's lifting the bobbin case from my hand which is telling me that that tension is way too tight so I'm going to reduce the tension by turning this screw to remember whether you turn left or right it's easy if you remember lefty loosey righty tighty so if I need to tighten the tension I will turn the screw to the right if I need to loosen the tension I turn the screw to the left I know this is quite tight so I'm going to turn it a quarter of an hour. Now I'm going to do the test again, lifting up the bobbin and it's just standing up and just starting to run. It's still a fraction too tight. So I'm going to reduce this by five minutes, just small amounts. It's going to stand in my hand and now it's running freely. It's got tension on it and if I hold it still you can see that that is running smoothly. It's not fighting me, it's not grabbing. So that tension I'm now happy with. For the top loading bobbin, follow your manufacturer's instructions to remove the needle plate and the area surrounding above the bobbin. Then you can remove your bobbin case. And it works in the same way. We want that to run nice and smoothly. This one's a little bit too loose. I can feel it's not tight enough. We have a screw in here and I'm going to turn this by <coughs> a five minute increment. You do need a small screwdriver when doing this. One that's going to get in and get into the screw. So I've turned that five minutes. It's a little bit better. Some of these bobbins you can actually do the stand and run test. This one's not one of those. It is a matter of learning when that is running freely. It's just moving smoothly. It's not pulling. It's not gripping. It's just got a nice tension on it. So once you've adjusted that bobbin tension, you're now going to work with the top tension. I've set the bobbin tension and I've set the top tension to correct. If you have a look at this, the stitching, you can see the needle hole but you cannot see the bobbin thread being pulled up into the stitches. When I come to the point at the top end, I have a perfect point. I don't have the stitches being pulled into here which we call eyelashing when the bobbin thread is pulled up and that's telling me that the top tension is too tight. When I do the circle here, my circle's formed all its stitches. 
Once I've looked at the top stitch and checked out how it looks, I then like to turn over my fabric and have a look at the back. If you have a look here, you can't see my top stitch poking through. I've used two different coloured threads and that way I could tell if the top stitch and the bottom stitch were being pulled either way. When I get to the end, I've got a perfectly formed point and a perfectly formed point here. I'm not having eyelashing at the bottom. That's telling me that the top tension and the bobbin tension are balanced. I'm just going to sew one line of stitches. This is with the tension correct. And then I'm going to move across and I'm going to sew another line where I'm going to lower my tension way down. So this one has the tension lowered right down and you'll be able to see a difference between the two lots of stitching. I'll sew one more line and then I'll show you the three lots of stitching that I'm going to do. I'm now going to put the tension right up. Which is a fair way on this machine. Okay, I'll do one more line here. And this is a good practice test to learn what your machine is doing. Now I'm going to turn that one around. And this is the first row of stitches that we sewed. If you have a look at here, my needle marks are all you can see in here. You cannot see my bobbin thread being brought up. In this one here where I loosened the tension right off, if you have a look at it, I can actually pull these stitches. They're too loose. If I do that with this, they're not moving. They're staying where they should. This one here, if we have a look at this, you can now see that the bobbin thread has been brought to the top. And you can just see that there, but you can also see that this tight top thread is really tight. If you feel it, this one feels quite sharp. This is soft and this is just feeling nice. I'm going to flip this piece of fabric over. I'll just remove it from the machine and turn it over and we'll have a look at what's happening at the back. This is the one correct stitches, all nicely formed. This one here is where I loosened off the top thread and you can now see that the top thread is coming down to the bottom and I can feel those top stitches being pulled down. You can see here where I turned, it's a lovely turn in here. This one's now starting to pull in and this one here I've got a lovely mess at the back of the work. If your thread is pulling tight, it tells you that the top tension is too tight and therefore you need to loosen that tension. If the thread is loose and gathered as in this one here, it's telling me that my top tension is too loose and I need to tighten it. And that's really all I need to know to get those tensions correct. Remember, every time that you change your threads in the top, you will need to change your top tension. If you are using the same thread in the bobbin, you won't need to adjust that. But when you do change the thread in the bobbin, you'll need to adjust the bobbin tension. Adjust the bobbin tension first, then start adjusting the top tension. I have the foot set in this position for doing my ruler work and I'm getting beautifully formed stitches. I don't have any skip stitches or anything. I can do circles. I can go up and down. I can also raise my foot I'll just bring the needle up and I will raise the foot a little bit and I will sew some more with the foot in a higher position. I'm still going to get properly formed stitches. I can still sew circles. I'm not having any skip stitches and I'll do one more which I will remove the foot totally and sew without a foot on the machine. 
when I first began quilting 40 something years ago we didn't have uh, free motion quilt settings or ruler feet or darning feet or free motion feet and to free motion quilt how I began quilting and if you remember when you may have heard me say before when I started quilting there wasn't a patchwork shop in Australia and we didn't have very many books or and there weren't, weren't any magazines so what we learnt we learnt ourselves and from the small amount of information we could get from overseas so I quilted without a foot now we do not recommend that you do this there is no foot to help prevent your fingers from going underneath that needle but as you can see I can still free motion quilt I can still get beautiful stitches I can still work circles the fabric does pop up and down as we're doing this because it's not being secured in place but I am still not getting any skip stitches so as long as your tensions are correct you should not have skip stitches when using our ruler foot and as they say do not try this at home but this is free motion quilting without any foot.